Hey macro photographer, would you like to see how I got this image from here to there? Then stay with me because I'm going to share with you how I post process my work in On One Photo Raw. The best advice on creative macro photography, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell so you're notified every single time I upload a video on Thursday. Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions on how do I start my workflow from start to finish? So let's get to it. So first I just want to share with you my thought process on why I would even want to process this image because as you can see there's a lot of problems with it. But I see something really beautiful which is in this area right in here. A soft feel to the water drops on a dandelion. You really got to have something that excites you about the image and just try and if it works out it works out if it doesn't it doesn't so we're going to go ahead and go through this and see if it works because i have not post processed this at all prior to doing this video so you can see when i clicked on the edit to the right that the way i have mine set up is a bunch of presets over here to the left sometimes you know that could be distracting to your eyes at first so i'm just going to go ahead and close that to the bottom left and get that out of my view for right now. Before I get into developing, you can see that I have a layer. We're in the develop module here and we're, uh, we have a layer. I personally like to add this layer as a duplicate. And then I start post-processing because for me, I want to be able to go back to the original as I start processing it, I can click on and off of these little dots. I want to be able to see what I started with. Let me see what the details are saying. There's no sharpening. I like to do a little bit of sharpening in the beginning just to be able to see what it's doing um, because I shoot raw and there's no sharpening added to the image at all. So you can use these defaults and all that but I suggest you go up to 100% and really look. And don't do too crazy right now because in the very end, you can sharpen what you want to have sharpened. If I had any noise at the moment, and I'm looking real quick, you know, where it's all yucky and maybe different colors because I do occasionally get that, then I would do a small little noise reduction. Right now, what my process is totally thinking about cleaning up before I crop, before I started adding textures, if I'm gonna do that, whatever. Here's my levels, I'm looking at my levels, everything's okay. What I like to do normally is flatten things out. So in the develop, when it says tone and color, let me show you that. Uh, contrast, All right, I'll show you this. So right now I just popped the contrast and that means that I have the darker areas and the lighter areas popping and I don't like to do that in the very beginning. In the beginning I like to flatten things out and actually maybe even bring shadows out a little bit more and highlights down to even flatten things out a little bit more because when I really get into the post processing I'll start pushing those pixels on um, contrast, structure down here, and to haze and all that fun stuff. Make sure that the histogram is in the middle if that's what I want. If I want something very dark, then it, the histogram would be to the left, or if I want it very bright, it'll be all the way to the right. AI Auto will usually, we'll click on that, automatically add some contrast. And you know, so some of you that are first starting out, you may want to do this. You may want to just try these AI if you're if you're really not into post-processing because I feel it does an excellent job I like to look at it right here in front of me then I also like to look at the small image because as you can see to the right look at all this brown over here to the right the, it's totally green and then it has like a beige color to the right which I planned on cropping anyways to tell you the truth for the crop I'm going to straighten it out I'm going to bring it over my first intentions was to go all the way, but I'm not sure if I want that anymore. See, that's why you can see that on one never damages your image. So let's just put this on the thirds. You can see here's the thirds over here. 
Okay, so again, each time I do something, I'm evaluating before I actually start pushing what I need to do. Okay, so let's just do my next step, which I always do, is clean up whatever is distracting in the image. Let's get it even closer. I even get up to over 100 pixels. You can see I'm in 171, and that's because I've always printed my macro images very big, and when you print, you'll be able to see these little details in here in the print. So if a client wants this after I've made this piece, I know it's ready to go. I don't see too many distractions. Okay, here's a distraction right here, I see one. So what I'm looking for is I love this feel. It's very refreshing. So I want my eyes to keep flowing. Well, this little dot right here, stops the flow and you may be saying well that's kind of crazy it's so minute no if you want to do pro you take every little area and fix it and then I just pushed the retouch and I clicked on the dot and it samples the other area if you want to see more retouching then definitely go into the series that I did. Uh, this is my story and this is just excess information and I just don't like it. So I'm just going to go ahead and crop now because I'm already feeling it. I actually stepped away to help Kevin do some things around the house. So that's one thing I would highly suggest that you do is always step away from your image for a while and come back. You'll get a new perspective. Okay, I'm loving that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and make another copy. It will make the changes that I've done. So remember, I went in here and did the details. And now I'm just gonna take off the sharpening because I already have it here on the second one. So I don't wanna double sharpen my image. I'll tell you right now, this is called cleanup. This is what I do. Let me know down in the comments, what's your biggest takeaway so far? Okay, so now what I want you to do is think like an artist. This is now where we're going to make this image yours, and it's going to be mine now. So this layer is gonna be called processing for me. Okay, this is where we're gonna change up colors or whatever we're gonna do that floats our boat. Sometimes what I do is I actually like to go into the preset areas to grab ideas. I kind of like this background over here to the right, but I like the way Shanghai has really got those water drops going, but it's a little too overdone on the top. So let's just go ahead and click on that one and see, wow, you can really see those water drops. Very, very cool. This always has effects, so I'm just gonna go down here and see what it gave it, dynamic contrast. It even did a black and white to add probably the pop, because I've done that in Photoshop. So there's two ways to mask, and I'm just gonna go ahead and mask the dynamic contrast, because I know that's what's affecting the top area. And so I want to paint out, right? I wanna paint this out and I'm over here to the right. Okay. Let's see, my flow, I'm gonna turn down. So my flow is 100% up here, but as I get closer down here, I'm gonna change my flow. Okay. And you can see I've got it feathered. So I'm gonna bring down my feather. This is, you can see how much it's gonna feather. I'm gonna take my flow down just a little bit here because we're getting close to the drops, like just kind of feathering that out. Let me even bring it back in. Shift X changes it now to paint in. And so since we're on that layer, here's the actual, so you can see, I think I'm gonna even tone it down just a little bit. It seems like it's a little harsh before, after. And you can see all I've toned down was the dynamic contrast. I got rid of it up here and I just toned it, but it's still letting the flowers, I mean the water drops pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this now because we don't really need to see it. It's kind of pretty. That's the glow that I've been looking for. Yes, that's pretty. And we will drop this around. Okay, and we're going to spread them out. 
and then I'm going to invert it so it's opening up over here to the one flower. And then I will take my local adjustment brush and I'm going to paint out some of this on the drops because it's just defeating my purpose, right? We're going to add another layer. It's going to do um, bottom. And we're going to go to my favorites. I want to see if I can see that again. I love that texture one. This one's fun. I don't know if it's too much. This is what we just did with that preset, but it's below the post processing. Put it on top, right? And then remove, like say, I think it's easier just to like remove some of it because it's a little overpowering. Power, powering, <laughs> overpowering. Okay, I had to step away from the image. I had a 256 error which happens of course with software and I couldn't figure it out. So what I ended up doing was merging what I had. And now what I'm gonna do is I saw Shanghai again, which I really liked. So let me show you, this is Shanghai and here's the filter. So see over here to the left, I can actually play with it here too. Instead of doing the whole layer in a mass, go down to the effects here See, here's the effects that it gives us. I'm going to mess with the filter by clicking on here and I'm going to use a, push it over here. You can see how it's flowing. And maybe even bring it in more. So it has more of a gradient instead of me just messing with it, right? Okay, maybe it's just to tone that down. Let's go to the local adjustments. And I think I'm gonna darken. Let's see what this will do. Take my flow way down. And let's just see, gently painting. So it's not so prominent. I'm going to call this a wrap. There's some things that I may want to do after, but evaluating the image. Okay, there you go. Now that you know how to make beautiful creative work in On One Photo Raw, go ahead and download my ultimate and essential macro photography toolkit to get your hands on my top macro photography creation resources to make your next image spectacular so you can create work faster without the guesswork. The link is below in the description. Want to be part of our private Facebook group? I jump here on live every single Tuesday to answer questions on macro photographing, lighting, post-processing equipment, and selling your work. The link is down below. If you haven't seen the four-part series on On One Photo Raw, check out the playlist down below. If you like this video, have it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. And always remember, your thousand words does make a difference.